Hello, welcome back to my channel. So I've got a lot of messages and comments recently asking me about how I take care of my skin. So I thought today I would share with you a few skincare habits that I have formed, particularly in like the last five or six years that I try to habitually stick to or that I really try to live by. I do take skincare quite seriously. I prefer skincare over makeup. I probably spend more money on skincare because I find when my skin looks really good, I don't have to wear as much much makeup. I also really want to preserve my skin for as long as I possibly can. That being said, aging is a part of life. Aging is beautiful. I have totally accepted that I am going to age, I am going to get wrinkles one day, and so will you. It's a bit of a shame that the beauty industry kind of drills into us that in order to be beautiful you have to be youthful and young looking when like most of the population are older and have wrinkles. It's not really a wise message to tell each other that we need to prevent wrinkles and that wrinkles are bad because they're just a part of life and they're honestly so beautiful. So I think we just need to remember that the beauty industry is a completely different thing to beauty. I felt like I needed to say this because I am going to be mentioning anti-wrinkle products and I'm going to be using phrases such as anti-aging and anti-wrinkle because that is the common phrases known in the beauty industry for certain products. I do use anti-wrinkle products, I will be speaking about them. I enjoy looking after my skin and preserving it so that when I do get wrinkles, which I will, they will be all in the right places, looking beautiful and luminous and plump and moisturized, rather than the kind of wrinkles that are caused by damage and just improper uh, skincare. So I just wanted to make that really clear that there is nothing wrong with wrinkles and we shouldn't try and prevent them from happening because they will, but we should just invite them to come in a more luminous and beautiful and embracing way. <laughs> okay, so here are my skincare habits. The first one, it goes without saying, so I'm not going to spend too long talking about it, but moisturizing. I moisturize every morning and every night. It's really important. It's the basics of skincare. I use this one, La Rocher Posse. I really do like this brand. I don't know why, they're kind of expensive but they kind of feel just kind of luxurious and like a little treat. I don't buy very often because it's a little expensive but I bought this little one, it's run out so I recently bought another one. As I said I don't buy this all the time so I went for a cheaper one this time and this has an SPF 30 which is really important. And then for night time I've actually run out of night cream as well but um, every now and then I like to use Egyptian magic before I go to bed. This stuff is crazy. This used to be in all the magazines, all the celebrities used to talk about it years ago. I've had this tub for years. It's all rubbing off the packaging. I put this on at night if I feel like my skin's a bit dry and just needs a bit of moisture. And every time I use this before I go to bed, I wake up and my skin looks really plump. It doesn't look greasy or oily. It just has a really nice dewiness to it. So yes, I like this as a night treatment. I like to use an eye cream. I know that a lot of people say that they're a bit useless and that you're fine just using your normal moisturizer most of the time. But I don't know, something about an eye cream I just like the way it feels. I, I like to pamper my eyes. So yeah, I use this little one from the body shop. That's what I've been using at the moment, but I'm on the lookout for another one. The next habit that I formed is sunscreen. Again, this is something that is becoming more mainstream in skincare. People are really starting to look after their skin more in terms of wearing sunscreen, or <laughs> wearing sunscreen all the time. I remember when I was about 18, I started looking into like Asian skincare. A lot of women in Japan and China are huge on sunscreen. You UV rays are really damaging to our skin. They're one of the biggest causes of aging, apparently. I don't really believe that because I think you'll age regardless, but just not great for your skin. I like to use specialized face sunscreens rather than using just a body sunscreen on my face because I find that they can be a bit clogging and a bit greasy. This is like a really cheap one, just Sultan boots, and this is slightly more expensive. Again, it's Le Rocher Posse. I don't know if I'm <laughs> pronouncing that right, but I like the way it sounds. This is factor 50. It goes on quite nice under makeup. I think that's why I wanted to buy a little bit more expensive one because it's really important that it's not clogging my pores and that I can actually put makeup on over the top. It has a little bead in it as well. A little while ago, I actually tried to start training myself not to squint in the sunlight because I would always find myself doing this in the sun or frowning here 
and like squinting here. I started trying to train myself just to relax my eyes whenever I was in sunlight, but to be honest, I just find it easier to wear hats and um, sunglasses. I have a ton of hats. I'm a huge hat wearer. I have all kinds, all different kinds. I will always try to go out with sunglasses. I'm very fair skinned, so I just burn. I can't really get a natural tan and I don't like tanning my face or putting my face in the sun too much. So I use fake tan and I put bronzer and blusher on my face and uh, fake freckles as well. So if you wanna know how I do that, comment below, I might make a video on it. I think I started looking into anti-wrinkle and anti-aging stuff when I was around 18. I'm now 24, so that was about six years ago. I remember watching a YouTube video and this woman said, prevention is better than cure and I always that just stuck in my head so I was really interested in it. So I bought a breast firming cream when I was 18 and I've used it ever since. I think they've discontinued it but I now use the Palmer's body firming butter and I use it on my breasts and my chest area after every shower or bath. So I just massage it in. I also do breast massage. I like having perky boobs and I want them to be like perky for as long as possible. And yeah, they will sag one day. What's the harm in like giving them a little bit of a chance, you know? I like my boobs. I think they're pretty damn good. So maybe it's working. I remember learning around this time about pillow wrinkles, how we get wrinkles from our sleeping positions because we spend about a third of our lives asleep in bed. So we're spending a third of our lives, however we sleep, like smushed up against our pillow. So I started training myself to sleep on my back. And not only is it better for your skin because gravity pulls your face back and you're not getting any uh, wrinkles on your face from sleeping, um, but it also um, helps keep your skin clearer. And it also um, is better for your boobs as well. <laughs> so I'm pretty good at sleeping on my back now, but I would always find that sometimes I would would roll over in the night. I heard about these pillows that were specially designed to stop you from getting sleep wrinkles and I've been interested in getting one for so so long. So I discovered this company called Sleep and Glow. They were kind enough to send me one of their pillows to review. So this is it. This is not a sponsored video. I've had it for almost two months now so I've had a lot of experience sleeping on this. So it's designed with these special grooves on each side so that when you sleep with your face like this, none of your skin or your face is pressing against the pillow because it kind of goes into the groove. It supports your forehead here and your neck here and also your shoulder and just allows you to sleep on your side without smushing your face. It also has like a dip in the middle for sleeping on your back. It's made of memory foam, so it's super comfortable and squishy. It's also orthopedic, so it encourages you to sleep in the physiologically correct sleeping position, which can be better for your posture. The fabric's made from 100% organic material. I think it's made from eucalyptus flower, so it's just better, softer on your skin and also for your hair. When I got this, I was worried that it would actually give me neck pain because it looks like such a peculiar shape. It it take me a couple of nights to get used to it but I actually grew to like it really quickly because obviously I've already learnt to sleep in certain ways to prevent um, pillow wrinkles. I've also found that I actually have not woken up with any stiff neck or p neck pain or shoulder pain issues since using this pillow. I guess the orthopedic effect is working. Now in terms of does it work, yes, but you have to work with it. You can still end up smushing your face on this pillow. Like if you sleep on it wrong, you will smush your face. You have to kind of train yourself to use the grooves that it gives you. When I sleep on my back, I usually sleep with my head sort of to one side, sort of like this, but it's still not really like touching anything. I also sometimes find myself sleeping like this. I use this on my forehead. My face is not smushed anywhere. If you're gonna buy one of these, just give it a bit of time. Make sure you put the effort in to like try to train yourself to actually use the pillow to its functional use. It's a hundred and $65, which is around 126 pounds. Some people might think this is quite pricey for a pillow. In the long run, it's so much better for your skin and it will save you so much money on um, anti-wrinkle products that I personally would buy this product for the price that it is at. I've been wanting to buy one for a long time. This is why people say it's so important to invest in a good mattress because you spend a third of your life on it. It's the same with your pillow, especially if you're very much invested in anti-aging 
and skincare. Also, you can get $10 off, which is around just under eight pounds if you use the code Isabella10. As I said, this video is not sponsored, but they have kindly made me affiliated, which means if you use my code, I will receive a commission. I've always wanted one of these pillows, so I feel really fortunate that they have made me affiliated and let me review their pillow. Um, so if you're interested in buying, all the information below. I made a rule for myself a couple of years ago that I would never, ever, 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 ever go to sleep with my makeup on. Obviously, most people know this, but I feel like when you're young and you're going out a lot, you're going clubbing, you're going out drinking with your friends, you get home five o'clock in the morning, you've had a bit to drink and you literally just wanna pass out, you're so tired, you just wanna fall asleep. There was quite a few times in my teenage years where I would think, oh, it's okay, I'll just take it off in the morning. Like, I'm just so tired, I just wanna like fall asleep. But one day I just decided, you know what? This is so bad for my skin. I want to take care of it. So I'm going to make a rule that I will never do this anymore. So if I'm going out clubbing and I know I'm gonna stay somewhere or I'm staying with a friend, I will always make sure I have wipes on me. Of course, it's better to use soap and water, but if I don't have access to face wash, wipes do the job, they get the makeup off. That's the most important thing. Sometimes I'll literally be like in bed, falling asleep, taking my makeup off with a wipe. I'm that dedicated. I would not recommend these wipes though. These are the Cool as Cucumber ones from Primark. They smell like bubble gum and they don't take off your makeup very well, but I didn't have any others to show as an example, but don't buy these, they're, they're terrible. About once every one to two weeks, I like to do some kind of face mask. I usually choose a clay mask because I have quite large pores and clay is supposed to draw out the intoxities. Intoxities? Is that a word? Probably not. Intoxities? Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> intox toxins and I don't know. Anyway, I have this one from L'Oreal Paris. It's not great. It stings my face a little bit, but I've got loads of it left, so I'm gonna continue to use it. I kind of prefer a more organic kind of clay mask, but it does the job. And if I'm going to use a mask, I like to steam my face first. This is just a bog standard cheapy little steamer that I got years ago. You can also use a bowl of hot water, put a towel over your head and like let the steam go into your skin for about five to 10 minutes. This just opens your pores, so it's better to do this before using a kind, any kind of mask or treatment. I don't use hydration masks very often because I find they're quite expensive for what they are. They're like two pound for like one mask that you use once and then throw it away. It just seems like a lot of money. But I used this one for the first time last weekend and it made my skin so beautiful and dewy and plump. And then when I put my makeup on after, it was just a good face day. I would recommend using a hydration mask if you have a big event to go to or you just wanna look extra, extra, a little bit nice, you know? A hydration mask, an hour or two before you do your makeup, you look banging. Facial massage. I do this every two to three weeks. I really wish that I would do it more, but a lot of the time I find I just don't have the time or end up doing other things anyway. Yeah, I have one of these little rolly things. It's quite nice and cooling, but honestly, I kind of prefer to use my hands to do certain moves, <laughs> moves with your hands on your face. What I do is I will type into YouTube lymphatic draining facial massage. I find a video that's around 15 minutes long and I'll just follow through the video. The lymphatic draining is just like kind of getting all the toxins and liquids and puffiness out of your face. You drag it down, out, down, and then like out your neck. I think because it goes towards your armpits, it's like releases the toxins. Not entirely sure, but all I know is it makes me feel really good. It makes my face look a bit lifted, a little bit more like on point. So I like to do that in the evenings and I will usually use some kind of a face oil or I'll use this squalene. This is the ordinary squalene or squalene. I don't really know 100% what this does or why it's so good for your skin, but I remember watching, I think it was Dr. Dre. I remember her saying that squalene is a really good Good product to find in skincare. So I went out and bought 100% of it and I use this to do massage. I'm not that clued up on skincare. All I know is what I hear from others and most of my, my knowledge has come from YouTube. I would highly recommend the channels Dr. Dre, she's a dermatologist, uh, Cassandra Bankson, she's an esthetician, and Hiram, who's a specialist. So they're all kind of different levels of qualification. But if there's something I wanna know about skincare, those are the channels I will go to, so. 
you're welcome. So those are some of the things that I really do religiously, that I really truly believe in, that help my skin in the long run. I have lots of other little tips and tricks up my sleeve that I don't have time to share in this video, but I would be happy to share in another video. So I hope you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe for more, like the video, follow me on Instagram, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.